Just a couple of uploads back, I made a video on the development history of Windows Vista. In this video, I included something a bit controversial. I was open to the discussion of Vista possibly being the worst operating system ever made. Naturally, such a bold claim brought in a lot of staunch disagreement, with most users coming to the same conclusion. What about Windows ME? And I think that is a great question. What about Windows ME? You know, the OS which came out right after Windows 98 in the year 2000, intended to set Microsoft up for the 21st century, ME standing for Millennium Edition. Even though it was meant to be just another improvement of Windows, that ended up not being the case. Instead, customers were just left furious, wondering why Microsoft would push out such an obviously incomplete and terrible product. Consequently, Windows ME has since been labeled by many tech enthusiasts as the worst operating system of all time. That's a pretty harsh and defamatory label. So what on earth did Microsoft do? I like to think of Windows ME as the emo phase of Microsoft. They were clearly having a bit of an identity crisis and figuring out how to properly express themselves. They didn't know what they wanted the future of Windows to be. To further add to this, Microsoft made the wise decision of releasing a very similar looking version of Windows called Windows 2000 at around the same time as Windows Millennium Edition. In fact, I have to admit, while doing my research, there were a few times where I actually found myself mixing up Windows ME with Windows 2000, and I frantically had to make changes. It was a pretty silly mistake, but it wasn't exactly an uncommon one either, at least in the year 2000. You see, during this time, the upcoming Windows 2000 and Windows ME operating systems were both being marketed in similar but different ways. Windows 2000 was going to be the business-oriented version of Windows, whereas Windows ME was going to be strictly for consumers, home users. Because of this, these were respectively just upgrades of Windows NT 4.0 and Windows 98. Windows 2000 was built on the newer, more stable Windows NT codebase, while Windows ME was still built on the 9X codebase, which was quickly becoming outdated and unstable. But a lot of users didn't know this, for reasons that I will get into later. Instead, they thought they were essentially just getting a home version of Windows 2000, which was released seven months prior. But this actually wasn't the case. The reality is the two versions may have appeared similar, but were different, very different. And after people made their upgrades, this became quickly apparent, and ME seemed to be the exact opposite of their expectations. Blue screen of deaths plagued the system, sometimes when the user wasn't even running any programs. Well, what the hecker doodle? What? Lack of a DOS mode from previous versions made it incredibly difficult for users to install older software. And of course, frequent hardware compatibility issues made the OS virtually unusable. But it all really boils down to one question. Is Windows ME really deserving of such a reputation as the worst operating system? Or was it similar to Windows Vista and just partially misunderstood? Today, we are going to talk about what exactly led Windows ME to be so heavily criticized and whether or not much of it is even warranted. Windows ME's infamous legacy seems to stem from what typically goes wrong with, well, most failed Microsoft products, the development and marketing. The issues that were particular to Windows ME were communication on Microsoft's end, the operating system's lack of recognition, and of course, its lack of capability. I mentioned that a huge component of Windows ME's downfall was the fact that it was controversially based on a separate kernel from Windows 2000, but we really need to understand why this was the case. It might be surprising since it came out a year later, but one thing that was significantly responsible for ME's downfall was the development of Windows XP. Just at the start of XP's development, Microsoft mentioned that they were working on a new version of Windows codenamed Neptune. This was meant to be the very first consumer-based Windows that would be built on the NT platform. 
During the release of Windows 98, Microsoft stated that 98 would be the very last version of Windows based on the 9x kernel. This statement was short-lived though, because just a year later, they announced that a new version of Windows 9x was currently in development, codenamed Millennium, to celebrate the year 2000. Aside from being Y2K proof, Millennium didn't seem to be all that different from Windows 98. Because of this, a lot of Microsoft enthusiasts were following the development of Neptune instead and didn't really care for Millennium. Ultimately, in order to speed up the production of Millennium, now rebranded with the name we all recognize, Windows ME, the Neptune OS was dropped and instead combined with a business Windows project codenamed Odyssey into a new project called Whistler, which would of course become Windows XP. Microsoft felt that this decision was practical. They needed more time to develop a consumer version of an NT-based platform, and this would help them get a new version of Windows out to consumers in the meantime. But all this did was just confuse a lot of Microsoft customers that might not have been paying as much attention. From the very beginning, Windows ME was just meant to be an interim release, while Microsoft finalized the consumer NT Windows. But all this talk about Windows Neptune being the first NT consumer version while they were also working on Windows ME, which was a 9x platform, and the fact that Windows 2000 had just come out, which was also NT based, yeah, it threw a lot of people off guard. It also didn't help that Microsoft came out with a Windows version named 2000, and another with the name Millennium in it, with virtually the exact same UI at around the same time, causing more confusion with the marketing. Because of all these things and relatively no clarification from Microsoft, a lot of people who were purchasing Windows ME were either confusing it with 2000, or if not, were under the impression that they were getting an NT version of Windows. They had no idea that they were basically buying Windows 98 for a second time, something they probably already owned. They were seemingly upgrading from an outdated, unstable 9x operating system to a newer, outdated, unstable 9x operating system. Windows ME was basically marketed as the home edition of Windows 2000, but customers weren't given that. People who soon realized this while using ME felt that Microsoft had cheated them essentially giving all the praise and attention to the much more stable and secure Windows 2000. As a result, a lot of home users actually upgraded again to Windows 2000, despite it being for businesses. Last minute development decisions and unclear answers from Microsoft complicated things for consumers, and this was one of the big things about Windows ME that left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Windows ME also didn't receive much appreciation because it didn't really get the chance to. The big reason for this is, you're going to hear me say it again, timing. Seriously. When you take a look at the timeline of Microsoft software, as well as the development choices that we just went over, everything starts to come together. Think about it, it's the year 2000, and Microsoft has just come out with Windows 98 Second Edition the year prior, and it's received generally positive reviews. Along with this, Microsoft is also stirring discussion of an upcoming NT-based version of Windows, so everyone has their sights on that. Not only did Windows ME come out way too soon after another Windows version, it was basically the same version. People who just bought a new copy of Windows 98 SE weren't going to bother spending more money on another version of Windows that didn't seem all that different, just barely a year later. Albeit sales for Windows ME weren't terrible, but those who were looking to upgrade just when the reviews for ME were starting to kick in would either do so with Windows 2000 or just another version of Windows 98. On top of that, just a year after Windows ME's debut, Microsoft finally released their NT-based consumer product, Windows XP. And at that point, especially for those who upgraded once more to XP, Windows ME was now just a distant thought in people's heads. These circumstances didn't give Windows ME the time to shine. The versions in between, 98, 2000, and XP, were released only a year apart, and because they were all good, they minimized Windows ME's abilities. People didn't really have the chance to get acquainted with ME, which is typically what happens to operating systems which become good. 
They get released, and over time, people get used to them more as they improve, something which didn't happen with ME due to its short life and quickly becoming a shadow of Windows XP. Windows ME wasn't loved because most people just didn't care. As I mentioned, a lot of people saw Windows ME as just an unnecessary update to Windows 98. The question you might have been asking yourself while watching this is, well, if Windows ME was criticized for being 9x based and that was becoming outdated, then why didn't Windows 98 SE receive the same amount of hate? I mean, it only came out a year before. Well, there are many reasons for this. Firstly, technology can really change a lot in a short period of time, even if it's just a year. Windows 9X might have been somewhat acceptable in 1999, but by the year 2000, there was already prevalent discussion of Microsoft moving its home users over to an NT environment, and subsequently, 9X really started to show its age. I mean, the 9 in the name already implies the 1990s. The millennium was all about looking forward. Second edition had the advantage of being marketed as an extension of Windows 98, an already well-received operating system that had been out for some time. People weren't really expecting a whole lot of changes, so it could get away with being a small upgrade. Windows ME, on the other hand, was being branded as a whole new version of Windows, so people expected big changes, especially with everything we just discussed about its development. And the last nail in the coffin was that Windows ME was actually, in some respects, less capable than Windows 98. Although Windows ME was a 9x operating system, it removed a feature that was somewhat respected in Windows 98 called DOS mode. This allowed users to install and run older DOS-based software. The feature was removed to increase boot time, and being no longer able to run this legacy software irritated a lot of people. Luckily, this was somewhat reversed with the introduction of compatibility mode in Windows 2000 Service Pack 2, and subsequently Windows XP, and the release of emulator programs like DOSBox, which gave people even more reason to not use ME. Let's again emphasize that Windows ME also crashed repeatedly and was extremely unstable. It being 9x based is partially to blame, but that's not the only reason, as Windows 98 wasn't as unstable. And this is specifically because of what happened when Windows Neptune was cancelled. Microsoft knew they were running out of time with Neptune, and wanted to get something out to keep home consumers happy. Consequently, they got an operating system that was rushed and felt incomplete, and these annoying crashes and bugs were the result of that. Another failed Microsoft product, such as Windows Vista, is often ridiculed for being somewhat too ahead of its time. Windows ME was too behind its time, and it was for these reasons. It essentially took Windows 98 and stripped away some of its features, making it less of an upgrade and more of a step back. Is Windows ME really deserving of the hate though, at least in retrospect? Not completely. I mean, if you take away the rush development and the fact that it was built on 9x, the concept of Windows ME itself makes it a pretty decent operating system of the time, just poorly executed. With Windows ME came a lot of features that would not only help make Windows XP so well received, but also ones which we seem to take for granted today. This would include automatic updates. Rather than users having to physically go to Microsoft's website to check for Windows updates, it was all done within the system. Another feature introduced in ME was System Restore. If your system and files were totally corrupted somehow, and just no longer usable, System Restore would bring the OS back to its previous state, making everything back to normal. Well, for the most part. The idea of a system restore feature itself was pretty cool at the time, but under ME, it was still heavily criticized. I imagine a lot of Windows ME users were getting acquainted with the system restore button, but I digress. It didn't always work, and if you were restoring your machine because, say, a virus infected it, system restore would sometimes restore the virus as well. It wasn't perfect. But the fact that it was introduced in Windows ME allowed for it to be further perfected in XP and beyond. You also had Image Preview. 
a whole program dedicated to just viewing images when you click on them, rather than having to open them in MS Paint or Internet Explorer. And my personal favorite feature, the first release of Windows Movie Maker. This creation from ME would prove to be insanely influential on Windows XP with the rise of YouTube, which would soon attract millions of low-budget filmmakers. If you used very particular hardware, software, and constantly checked that you installed the right drivers, Windows ME actually ran alright, but a lot of people didn't even think of doing that. So, was Windows ME really that bad? In that regard, yeah, it arguably was, but its issues don't take away from the fact that it did have some pretty cool things and showed that, despite all the calamity, Microsoft was steering the ship in the right direction, and future generations of Windows were going to be very advanced and capable of a lot of things. Windows ME might go down as the worst operating system of all time, but it was one of many Windows versions to help contribute to the traditional and expected software routines that we see today. What was the worst operating system you have ever used? Was it Windows ME? Let me know your answer in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never miss a future video. Also check out my Patreon to gain access to exclusive content and to watch videos early.